G'day, this is just a quick introduction to the BlackBerry Key 1 and I'm really just putting this video together to make it easier on people that pick up this phone and uh, are used to BB10 because it does take some adjusting uh, to get used to the Android platform but uh, that said, I've been mucking around with Android for a while and I'm pretty bloody happy with this device. It's a uh, strange feeling because I just wanted a robust device that has great battery life, is good at performing uh, a phone's most uh, imperative task quickly, has all the BlackBerry shortcuts and a universal inbox and all of that, and I got it. And it's robust, which means it's not very fancy, so as much as I've wanted this for years, I don't really care about it that much. So that's why it's a strange feeling to have a phone that's robust and not fancy, not precious like the Priv, which is what I'm filming this video on. Anyway, I'll just take you through what I had to be mentally prepared to give up when I switched from BB10 to Android. I started with the Priv, which I'm really glad to sort of get rid of. Um, it was a good phone, but it wasn't a Blackberry. Well, it was, but didn't have the form factor was uh, a lot of teething issues and a few hardware, hardware shortfalls. So what we're missing out on with BB10 when you switch to Android is this great user interface that integrates the recent apps page. It makes it particularly easy to switch between already open workplace apps. It integrates the home screen with the recent apps page and it integrates the messaging as well, as in like a universal inbox. So you can have shortcuts to check all your messages. You can have shortcuts to compose emails. And you can very easily go back to what you were doing or save all drafts and check all your notifications, keep your finger on the pulse and keep responding. So giving up this uh, flowy interface was pretty frustrating, but uh, that's life. And uh, to tell the truth, this has an Android runtime and all I ever wanted was the Android runtime to be up to date and have Google Play services. So in reality, what I wanted was BB10 to be Android anyway, just on a microkernel. But uh, another thing we were missing out on was the fact that the device search is integrated with the universal search. Um, I mean, the device search is integrated with the keyboard and file manager and so on. So I can just sort of start typing from the home screen if I spell it properly um, and look up files like my dog. Just start typing my dog's name. For example, I can start looking up sales packages uh, very quickly from the file manager or I can sort of skip straight to web pages from the home screen. There's also all sorts of uh, shortcuts with the uh, browser, uh, like R for reader mode and S for search. So I can see how many times it says taken in this uh, screen. But anyway, um, that's pretty much what I had to say goodbye to with BB10 to swap for Android. So on Android, there's quite a few limitations and uh, BlackBerry had to adjust. And I think they did a really good job of it. One of the things that they had to do was get rid of the device search. Uh, they still have a device search, but it's completely different. It's not as good at searching from the home screen. So I use the convenience key to use that. And the benefit of this is if I'm working closely with somebody I can just uh, use an instrument action to email them and the next time, if I'm working closely with them for a couple of days, the next time I want to contact them, they'll be in the history. So I have a shortcut to contact this person over and over again. So uh, you can do that for messaging and, uh, you know, texting, emailing, calling. So I'll just... Uh, Just do that. And yeah, so 
the next time I want to contact this person that I'm working with closely, it's in the history of the device search. So that's kind of handy, but I don't think it's as good as the BB10 version. Uh, but what they've done here is they've doubled up on keyboard shortcuts. Now what they've done is they've made it possible to have a long press and a short press keyboard shortcut. So there's all sorts of different things going on here. And it's really changed the way you need to do things. For example, I had a, a key to text my wife and uh, I had a different key to call my wife on BB10. But now I can just sort of long press to call my wife and short press to text my wife. Um, I haven't really set it up like that yet because I'm still using BB10 for work. But uh, yeah, I'll just give you a quick example here. I can uh, long press G to launch Google Maps. I can short press G to launch driving mode in Google Maps because that works very well for navigation and voice assistance. Okay, Google, navigate me to 175 Castlereagh Street, Sydney. So there you go. Uh, I can press T as a short press to check traffic in my area. I work in the transport industry, so I might want to check that South Dowling Street is stuffed and so on. So T for that. Uh, sometimes we might get a little bit lost uh, delivering to remote locations and not sure how to get out of where we are without encountering traffic restrictions. Uh, so I can just press uh, Z and that'll navigate me to somewhere closer to home. It'll just show me how to get out of uh, a destination that I'm lost in. Uh, another thing is uh, you can have shortcuts to launch particular web pages on your home screen. So I've got a few web pages that I use uh, very quite often. But I don't use these shortcuts on the home screen other than to set up for my working day because when you press this button, it opens a new tab. But if I use a keyboard shortcut, so say uh, short press O uh, for outsource, I can go to my tracking page. If I long press O for outsource, I can email the company that we outsource to the most. Uh, if I short press uh, D for dispatch, uh, I can go to our dispatch page and so on. There's also a keyboard browser that's just been released and I really like it because uh, I think Android web browsing pretty much sucks. So if I short press B, it'll go to this keyboard browser. It also has uh, reader mode shortcuts and so on. Should also mention that the BlackBerry key one is uh, 64 characters wide when you put it in portrait mode. So that's the optimum viewing area for reading documents. So it's great for strolling like that. Um, I have, uh, it has little keyboard shortcuts like S for search. Actually, I'm still getting the hang of this, but I'm not sure it works with uh, reader mode. But there you go, it says Malaysia 10 times in this article. Um, so that's nice not to miss out on that in BB10, but unfortunately it's not integrated with the uh, device search. Another good thing about this is the hub. I used an A shortcut to launch the hub simply just because when you launch the hub and you press A, you get a tab pop up. So a double tap of the A button will bring this up um, and that will show all the filters. You know, I've got BBM text messages, a couple of three emails, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, uh, Google Hangouts, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all in the same inbox. Um, I've actually hidden, turned off notifications for social media, and but I have set up a custom view which um, has WhatsApp, call logs, messaging, emails, uh, Facebook Messenger all in the same view and that's sort of my go-to home screen widget. So if I want a shortcut to check all my most uh, important notifications, I just double tap that and it'll go back to this home screen widget 
and then I can just go back and start responding to things very quickly by a double tap of the home button. So the way to do that is to, I'll just move this over, is to long press on this screen. Bugger it, I'll just go this way. So I'll go widgets here. I'll show you just quickly, I hit this middle button here. I'll go widgets and I'll choose hub widgets. <laughs> Sorry guys, probably should have practiced this before I made a video, but I'm a bit busy today. So I've got a hub widget there, and now I can choose my custom view. Do I want BlackBerry Hub? Do I want a custom view? Do I want all my emails? I'll just do all my emails. So that's three different email accounts. Set that there, move it up. And you need to long press this to make sure it's your home screen. So that's not the home screen. I can make that the home screen now, but this is the home screen. So I do that, extend this a little bit, and there you go. So if I'm, that's probably a bad app to use as an example. If I just want to check all my email notifications, I go back like that. Hope that makes sense. Takes a little bit of setting up, and sorry for being such a, a rookie. I'm not a phone blogger, but... There you go. Um, I have other shortcuts like e composes an email. Um, I have a sales package. If I short press e, it'll open that sales package. And I can sort of just uh, share it. And uh, choose who I want to share it to. And there's our little sales package, hit send, and great. So uh, anything else I should show you? Uh, long press R to remember a note. Long press N to create a note. Long press A to create an appointment. Uh, I think long press T to create a task. Uh, P for photos, and so on. Um, another great thing is uh, people complain about where the power button is, but if you go into settings and set it up properly, if I make a call by long pressing, I can just hit the power button to hang up calls, and that it's annoying using a touch screen to hang up calls. I think having a power button that's out of the way that hangs up calls is the best way you can set that up. Um, a lot of people complain that it's a convenient key, but you don't want to have a button that hangs up calls uh, placed in a convenient spot because then you'll accidentally hang up calls all the time. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I think that's about it. The, the hub does take some getting used to. It's good to be able to have a shortcut and it's good that it works with some more apps. I'd probably download this app called the Keyboard Browser, the Keyboard uh, Browser, yeah. And uh, actually, I'll just shut that for now because uh, another good way that it works is it's optimized. So it's gone straight into Google search here. So I can just, you know, search Calgary time. So, yeah, short press B and... Uh, go straight into Google search. I think that works better than the Google search widget. What else should I show you? I don't know, these pop-up widgets are pretty cool. I turn them off so it's gonna to have to reload. But uh, these little three dots over here let you have little custom views. Um, you can also add a custom views um, on top of an email folder. So if I press there, that'll go to my Outlook email but the pop-up widget can take me to a different custom view. Uh, text messages, custom view. So I could just like peek without looking into things. It's particularly good for Shazamming. If I want to know what a song is, I just use that pop-up widget. If I want to use Strava, I can just start recording my GPS log like that without opening the app and so on. Hmm. The camera is pretty bloody cool too. Uh, double press 
double press the keyboard, the power button to launch the camera. Can you see there? I can, I can scroll with the keyboard to adjust the camera. Hopefully that adds some more keyboard shortcuts. A for auto will adjust that back. If I switch to uh, manual mode, it's a bit clunky to do that. So hopefully they add an M for manual mode shortcut. It's got all the options here down the bottom. I can just sort of switch through like this, um, go from auto to ISO and adjust things just by without touching the actual screen. So that's kind of nice. Um, yeah. So where am I with the keyboard browser? Am I in an app page? Not really. So I'll just load that. And another thing is you can scroll with the keyboard, but the good old fashioned way is just press the space key and you scroll down one screen at a time. So that's really good for reading. I almost think that's better for scroll than uh, viewing. But uh, yeah. Um, so I'm just getting the hang of this a little bit. Can compose a text by, uh, and then I can just sort of type by flicking to type. Um, I can delete words by swiping back, hold the shift key down to scroll and, and so on. Uh, there's another little thing going on here where I can watch a video, long press the recent app button, and then flick emails. So I can, uh, a lot of people say that this phone isn't particularly good for multitasking because of the keyboard but virtual keyboards take up a lot of viewing area. So in reality, I can watch videos and flick emails. Um, yeah. And uh, there you go. So um, it's really good for multitasking like that. It's The screen's not particularly good for uh, viewing media or gaming, but if you're viewing media and typing at the same time or copying and pasting or anything that involves typing, this, this device has a superior viewing area to pretty much anything else on the market. It seems like the S8's keyboard takes up about half of the screen and uh, yeah, anyway, um, I use Chromecast as well, so I don't really like watching videos on my phone, I'd rather just cast it onto the big screen, which I can definitely do quite easy just by... Uh, Actually, my TV is not on, but yeah, there you go. I'm just broadcasting uh, music to the, my big screen, which is t connected to my uh, TV. Oh, wow. That's interesting because it, um, it literally just turned my TV on for me, a Samsung TV. So if we look at that, Spotify is now on my... My TV was originally off, and uh, I just turned on my TV with my smartphone by opening Spotify and casting. Anyway, uh, I hope you liked that and um, hope I wasn't too over the place. It was just a quick demo that 